Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you today. Our topic is about justice in Islam. You know, uh, always when we speak to Muslims about uh, uh, Islam, they speak about something called the perfection of their religion. And I don't know how Muslims can even speak of such a thing because I never saw such a stupid justice. And this is goes between the Quran and the Hadith. Now, please let me know if you have any difficulty in the sound. As you know, I'm using my uh, uh, travel uh, equipment, which is not the same as the one I use usually when I am home. Uh, in front of us, we have some hadith coming from Muhammad, and they are co in connection with the topic I'm going to speak about. The Messenger of Allah said, Don't curse the rooster, for it awakes you for uh, up for a prayer so the rooster should not be cursed and the purpose of that or the reason for that because mr rooster he awake you to go up to pray now i see that this is very logical but i don't know how a muslim can explain to me the stupidity of this statement why I cannot curse the rooster and why even I am cursing the rooster and what cursing the rooster will do and why Muhammad is worried about cursing Mr. Rooster you see when you curse a rooster uh, you, what curse exactly mean it's mean you invoke God to harm someone you ask God to harm someone now why in the world the Muslim he wanna pray to God to harm a rooster and why Muhammad he take it seriously that if somebody curse a rooster he is going to cause him harm I mean isn't it stupid both actions both statement is a stupid the one who cursed the rooster is a stupid and the one who says don't curse the rooster is even more stupid it's like saying to me don't curse the mosquitoes actually Muhammad he said in different hadith don't curse the lice or the fleas for they are they awake the prophets to pray and that as an excuse for muhammad why he have a lot of lies but the question here you know how i can understand someone who claimed to be a prophet claiming that if you curse a rooster you are causing a harm to the rooster you know when you hear this you think muhammad is a buddha he is a guy who is too much in love with animals. He uh, he is worried about animal rights. This guy he ordered to kill all dogs, and the Muslim they eat roosters anyway. So we don't curse them, but we kill them. We don't curse them, but we eat them. I mean, what does that mean? But obviously, Muhammad he cannot keep his mouth shut, and when he speak, he speaks something stupid. Now, in different hadith, and this is what I'm going to talk about, but I mentioned this one because it's connection in connection with the other hadith. There's two guys, they did gambling in the time of the caliphate, Umar al Khattab. So they came to the caliphate, and uh, or, or let's say they brought to the caliphate, and the caliphate, he found out about them that they are gambling using a rooster. So what, what the caliphate did, he said, Kill the rooster. I don't know if you got my joke, which is not a joke. Two guys are gambling and they are using a rooster as a gamble. Why you want to kill the rooster? What is the fault of the rooster? We have a prophet says, don't curse the rooster. And we have a caliphate says, kill the rooster. And what the rooster did, what is the crime of Mr. Rooster? Nothing. Then a Muslim, he said to the Caliphate, and here the, you will see the justice of Islam. It says here that uh, uh, it's reported that, etc., two men, they did gambling into a uh, uh, rooster in the time of Omar, and Omar, he ordered that those roosters to be killed. A man from the Ansar, from the Muslim, said to, to, to Omar, he said to him, Will you kill something which glorify Allah? So Omar, he left it. That's deep. That is seriously deep. So we should not kill the rooster for the rooster is a Muslim. 
but we can kill the rooster to eat him. You will notice with me here that the Muslim did not say, why do you want to kill the rooster anyway? I mean, what the rooster did? Are you going to eat him? What do you want to do? Is that a punishment? Is that a penalty? It's a penalty to who? Is that a penalty to the man who play with? What about you put the man who do gambling? Put him in jail. What the rooster have to do with this? Is it just a poor animal? Are you going to cook him? Are you going to eat him? No. Are you going to make him shish falafel? No. Are you going to make him shower? No. So why you want to kill the rooster? Because he is the caliphate of justice. Kill the rooster. Sir, we found those two guys doing gambling uh, uh, using a rooster. Okay, kill the rooster. And then the other guy, he is supposedly smarter than the caliphate. He said to him, <laughs> a brother. A brother for the sake of Allah. Are you going to kill a rooster who glorify Allah? A rooster who glorify Allah? So why you Muslim you know, eat rooster? You make fun of the Hindus because if you kill a cow for a Hindu, he get upset. And now the caliphate, he will not kill the rooster because you Muslims believe that the rooster, he glorify Allah, but yet you eat a chicken, you, you kill roosters every day, you slaughter them. So what the point of saying how you kill how how you kill a rooster who glorify Allah? So you Muslim you kill chickens and you eat chickens when they are glorifying Allah. And this is what I call it the most stupid stories you find in Islamic books. Obviously, all this story I believe it's fabricated. It's just to make you believe that in Islam there is justice, and uh, the Caliphate Omar was an amazing justice man. But there's nothing there intelligence. All what we see in front of us is a stupid story. Then if we go to Muhammad speaking about the rooster, you will see Muhammad going more stupid. Don't curse the rooster for it's a weeks for a prayer. So what the purpose of the rooster to exist in this earth? It is to awake Muslims to pray. So the rooster who lived between the Hindu, what his job? The rooster who 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 is who is exists between the atheist, what is his job exactly? To awake the atheist to pray the logic of Islam is very stupid then we continue I'm just giving you an example of the justice of Islam let's switch to Arabic hold on All right, let's see this one. The justice of Islam extends to more issues. Muhammad, he put rules involving animals. You remember Muhammad, he said that the three things would interrupt the Muslim prayer, which is a donkey and the dog and the woman. But Muhammad, he added in some hadith, he exchanged the animals. So in this Hadith in the front of us, he added the goat. Read with me. Uh, the Prophet S A W S B B M B M V led them in a prayer of at al bath with the staff set up in the front of him. He prayed two ra uh, two rakahs, which means two bowls. The, the Muslim translation is very funny. I mean, you translate the whole thing, and now this word is in Arabic. All right, and in the uh, which means he, he did he did two two bow down uh, for the noon time zohar mean noon time, and the asr prayer, the women and the donkeys would pass in the front of the staff, okay. And what is the story? The story is that Muhammad at that time he had no problem with the goat and the women and the donkey to go in front of him. But in different place, Muhammad he changed his mind, and this is telling us a kind of justice of teaching. Because here, remember, this is about about being justifying things. Justice is not about penalty; it's about how we justify behavior. Uh, let us see here. Yeah, all of those, they are saying the same.
But I want to show you another hadith. I hope I can find it. Where in the judgment day, Allah is going to judge between two goats. Let me see if I can find. You see, I don't prepare really for my topic because I do not need to. But sometimes uh, you have to find uh, the reference and it might take a little bit of time to find it depending on uh, how lucky you are in using the website. Um, I don't know if we can find it in this in English website here. Uh, let us see. All right, let us see. I'm trying to find you the reference. Anyway, just to make it short until I find the reference. Uh, according to Islam, in the judgment day, Allah is going to judge between two goats. One of them, one of those goats have a horn and the other goat do not have a horn. So Allah is going to judge and we will ask the, uh, the, the goat which has a horn, why you did hit with your horn the other goat? So when you hear those examples in Islam, you think Islam is a very high standard religion and Islam really it, it take care about everything everything have to go by justice a goat fighting a goat Allah will judge between two goats isn't it, this is too much really to believe and how Allah can judge between two goats I remember once I asked a Muslim uh, you know uh, about uh, when he mentioned that to me I said to him uh, is Allah going to to uh, uh, like uh, take to court a mosquito who did bite you and sick you suck your blood he said yes I said but Allah is the one supposedly who created the mosquito this way this is what she eat this is her food how you can judge a mosquito for being a mosquito this is the logic of Islam but remember the Muslims believe in different standard of justice when it's come to human so suddenly you find Muhammad caring too much about a human uh, uh, in a way he think is the right way to practice. So if we go in the Quran, we will find this. Let us see. Let's make it exact for fast finding. All right. In chapter 2, verse 178, it says, In the case of murder, Muhammad now is speaking his jewelries. So you cannot curse the rooster, but he ordered you to kill the lizard. You cannot kill the rooster for it a week, and you cannot kill even the lice or the fleas because they awake the prophets to pray. But look what happened when it's come to a human being. Oh, who you believe. Let me make it bigger so you guys can see it better. bigger for better reviewing let me refresh the page all right all who you believe in, in the law of, of equality is prescribed to you so this is the law is coming from Allah in the case of murder free for the free Slave for the slave, the women for the women. Don't curse the rooster. The rooster is protected by Muhammad. You cannot curse him. If you curse him, you are doing unjust behavior. But look at Muhammad, the idiot. He took the law of Moses, which it says eye for an eye. And because he's an idiot of the village, he practiced the eye for an eye in a wrong way. So look what he said, Muhammad, he divided the section, the, the human being to sections. There's a free man, this is the white man, the free man. And then there's the black man who is the slave. And then there is the th third section, which is the women. So in case of murder, if a free man kills somebody, and that man, he killed a free man, so free for the free. If a free man kill the slave, then we kill his slave. 
Have you ever heard of a stupid justice like this? If I kill your slave, you kill my slave? That's it? How that can be? What kind of justice? And remember here, the one is talking is Allah. Isn't this is not Muhammad. This is not Sahaba. This is not companion. The Muslim cannot say this is a weak. The Muslim, they will say to you that this verse is abrogated. Thank you very much for saying that. Why it's abrogated? I challenge the Muslim to tell me why it's abrogated. I mean, have you ever heard of a God abrogate his law about murder? This is a murder. It should be firm, stationary, and forever. Few weeks after we abrogate the verse, why? If there is any Muslim have an answer? You just gave me a law about murder. So what the problem? Why this verse is abrogated? The answer is very simple. People, they start complaining, making fun of the stupid Muhammad for such a law. How in the world, if a free man kill a free man, we kill the free man. But if he kill a slave, we kill the other slave. So now we have two victims. We cannot curse the rooster. And we should not kill the rooster before he worship Allah. But now we kill a slave, black person, just because a white man, he killed a black slave. So in order of killing, instead of killing the white man who killed the black slave, no, we kill another slave. So now instead of having one victim, we have two. In the case of a man killing a woman, what we do? We kill his woman. Have you ever heard of a stupid law like this? I kill your wife, you kill my wife? This is not eye for an eye. Eye for an eye that you kill the one who killed. You don't kill his wife. This is stupid. And this is exactly who is Muhammad. He is the man of his stupidity. He heard the Jews speaking about eye for an eye. He wanted to practice for eye for an eye in his own way. So an eye for an eye. Okay, you took my eye, I take yours. This is what eye for you, what eye, eye for an eye mean. But this is not exactly what's happening here. You took my eye, I took someone of yours eye. <laughs> <laughs> you took my wife I took you I take your wife and in in which way in like in case of murder which means I will kill her so you now I killed your wife I am the murderer and now what do you do you kill my wife so now we have two victims where is the justice and what is what kind of justice this justice is what is the logic of this God remember the one is talking here is Muhammad God not Muhammad the prophet and the proof that this is very stupid verse that this verse abrogated immediately I challenge any Muslim to tell me what was wrong made Allah abrogate this verse you see murder is murder in every time and every year in every century it doesn't matter why it was abrogated do any Muslim know We kill the black dog, for the black dog is the devil. We cannot curse the flies or the lice, for they are awakening the prophet to pray. We cannot curse the rooster, for they are awakening Muslims to pray. And we cannot uh, kill the rooster because he is a Muslim. But we can kill a slave because someone else kill a slave of someone else. We can kill a woman who have nothing to do with the crime because someone he killed the women of someone else. What kind of logic this logic is? This is the exact logic we see when Islam speak about Christianity. As an example, Muhammad he said that uh, Allah in the judgment day he will take the sin of the Muslim of the Muslims and he will place it on the Christians. why what is the reason what is the justice the quran and the muslim they say to us that is it fair that christ he died for you i mean you are the one who commits sin and yet the christ will be crucified for you is it fair 
No, it's not fair. Who said this is about fair? Uh, there's no fear in it. There's nothing in this life is fair anyway. People, they murder, and the Messiah, simply, he was murdered. This is what the crucifixion means. Murder is to kill someone innocent. What Jesus did, nothing. He did not crucify himself. You see, the Muslims, they try to make you believe that we Christians, we are the one who hang up Jesus on the cross, and we are the one who wanted Jesus to die, and then they question us about if it's fair or not. Suddenly, the Muslims, they know justice. And who said that Jesus killed himself? The Muslims, they say, yes, he killed himself. No, he did not. Read in the Bible and see where Jesus said that I killed myself or I want to kill myself. All what he say that he is not a coward. And he is willing to do whatever is going to take to prove that he loves us all. That's all. Otherwise, it was not really... Uh, he did not come to the Roma and says, uh, crucify me. He did not call the Jews and say, hey, come and kill me. He did not. His killing, his crucifixion was not fair. And then we find the Muslims speaking about the same logic, saying that it's not fair that Jesus will carry the penalty of death for a crime he did not commit. So just to save you, but then we find Allah carrying the uh, the sin of the human being who they are not Muslims and carrying all the sin of the Muslim stories and he put them on the Christians, on the Jews. Why? Where is the logic? Even if it is in the high, like in the size of a high mountain, why? There is no justice, and the Quran said that you know in the in the like uh, when somebody commit a crime, there is nobody will pay for the crime except the soul who commit the crime. How that can be? If you go here, let us see. Read with me here. He says, and no barrier of burden shall bear you another burden, which means simply uh, uh, every person will pay for his crime. Which means, and no sin, nobody will pay for the same for someone else. Nobody. No barrier of burden can bear the burden of other another. This is what Islam teaches supposedly. Okay, so how Allah, uh, he will put the sin of the Muslims over the Christians, even if the sin is the same as mountains. Where is, where is the logic and where is the, uh, what the, the, the justice? Under what rule, under what justice, under what qualification, you take the sin of somebody and put it over someone else? Islam is a chain of contradictions, stupidity. It is not right for Jesus to die for saving us, but it is right that Allah will take the sin of the Muslims and he place it on us. Why? What about judging everyone for his sin? The Christian judging for their sin. The Muslims judging for their sin. No, Islam don't believe in that. Allah will not judge the Muslims for their sin. Allah will take the sin of the Muslims, place it on the Christians and the Jews. How that can be? No logic, stupidity, and stupidity is amazing. And yet the Muslims, they give you speeches about justice, speeches about what is right and what is wrong. And one of the example of the stupid justice in Islam, if you ask a Muslim, when the Christians believe in Jesus to be God, did you ask yourself, how this happened he will say to you the christians corrupt the bible okay hold on is that bible the bible of allah or the bible of the christians 
this is the Bible of Allah so why Allah allow anyone to corrupt the if, if Allah allow I mean that's mean he is a partner in the crime how many people they corrupt the Bible how many those people who corrupt the Bible I want to know don't you agree with me if, if this is a true that's mean there's hundreds of millions of people they are victims because they never nothing nothing to do with the corruption you claim let us say I'm born of a Christian family today and they gave me the book and they say this is our book so what is my fault where is Allah justice shouldn't he protect his book so I will not be a victim no logic why you want to judge me of a crime I did not commit I did not corrupt the book I did not touch the book I have nothing to do with the book additional to that this is your book Allah he gave the Injil to the Christians and he gave the Torah to the Jews and the Quran full of verses speaking of that so why Allah he gave books he don't want to protect which mean based on this all those books as you see in the front of us you can pick up any chapter you want from the verse you see in the screen all of them confirm that this is the book of Allah given to us by Allah but yet Allah is a stubborn he don't want to protect the book so how we can be punished for such a thing if this book corrupt as the Muslims claim when it was corrupt nobody knows they don't know do you have the original they don't have did you see the original to compare between the original and the new? No, I don't. They say to you, we found the book of Barnaba. Barnaba book, it says that Muhammad is the Messiah, you idiot. I challenge the Muslims to teach the book of Barnaba in their schools and to accept it as a, as, a, as a Bible. This is how hypocrite they are. They try to say to you, this is a true book, but they will not accept the book for they are hypocrite like their prophet. So Allah, he sent to us the gospel. But Allah don't care for the gospel. And then Allah, he allowed the gospel to be corrupt because I changed any Muslim to tell me that Allah did not allow it to happen. How the corruption happened? Muslim, they believe in something is called the, the destiny. Allah is destiny everything. And Allah, he planned for everything. So Allah, he planned for the corruption of the Bible. He allowed it. Why he allowed it? That means he is a partner of the crime. He is the devil. I am a victim of your God Allah if the Bible is corrupted same he sent the Torah and the funny it says that every book sent by Allah is confirming what is before it so how come all the, they are confirming what is before them including the Quran confirming what is before it and now you say to me that this book is corrupt stupid and then look here it says let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed to them how you say to them judge by the book I revealed to you if they don't have a book it's corrupt that's mean the book at least in the time of Muhammad is not corrupt otherwise how you ask somebody to judge by a book you don't have no more that is the most stupid statement ever how I can how I cannot judge by a book I did not even hold in my hand that is madness stupidity but we'll come to Islam if you see in the text in the previous video there's a guy his name is Abraham and he posting for us a couple of uh, articles copy paste saying that the Bible is corrupt well thank you very much let us assume that this guy is telling us the truth but this is mean Allah is a stupid God how I can trust a God he cannot protect any book I mean imagine Allah he sent 124,000 prophet the Muslim themselves they witness to us saying that all the books previously sent by Allah is corrupt and now you want me to believe that the last book is not corrupt you want me to believe that so we have a god who is a loser imagine if allah go into the mondial in russia and he played 124,000 game and he lost them all except one according to you but there's no witness and now you want me to trust such a god if we go in the in the hadith if we go to the book of as if we go to the books of the scholars, we will find that there's tons of reference about verses in the Quran, either eaten by goats or are missing. As an example, the chapter of Al-Ahzab used to be equal to the chapter of Al-Baqarah. And this is according to Islamic source, which means more than 200 verses are missing in one chapter in the Quran. 200 verses is equal to a book. The Al-Baqarah is the biggest chapter in the Quran. If we go here, 
in the hadith we will find the following that when Muhammad was in the stage of death there's a goat entered the bedroom of Muhammad flipped Muhammad from the bed and she ate the Quran and now we have many verses according to the story in the front of us which is a Sahih hadith that those verses are missing we cannot find them no more why because her majesty the goat ate the Quran if your God cannot stop a goat how he can stop a human being and now by the way until now this goat is wanted in all Islamic countries because we want to know if this goat sent by the Mossad or CIA or maybe special agency or maybe by Trump so where is the Quran which is preserved did Allah wrote the Quran no did Muhammad write the Quran no the Muslim don't have a Quran written by Muhammad actually Muslim don't even have Quran by Uthman the Quran in front of you the Muslim they claim that this is the Quran of Uthman but there's no original copy of it not a single one the earliest copy Muslims they have is about 400 years after Islam and nothing to do with the Uthman it's a claim it's a claim that this is a copy of 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 Uthman and coming from who coming from a guy his name is Hafs if we search for Hafs we will find that Hafs by the Muslims accused to be a fraud and a liar but Hafs came more than 200 years after Muhammad how we can trust him if the Muslim themselves don't trust him actually according to Islam Hafs is rejected as a hadith reporter why because he's a fraud so we refuse his hadith we accept his Quran if we go around and search in the Quran for something like you know let's say uh, to find maybe how the Quran is collected is it collected according to Allah teaching or it's collected according to Muslims teaching the Quran says inna alayna jam'uhu wa Quranahu. what jam'uhu mean let us see the Muslim translation inna alayna jam'uhu wa Quranahu, chapter 75 verse number 17 let us see Yusuf Ali. If you don't like Yusuf Ali, you can open any other idiot. All right. It's for us, it is on us to collect it and to recite it, which means to teach it to you. So who is the one who will collect the Quran? Who is the one who is talking Allah? Who is the one who collect the Quran? It's not even Muhammad. So where is the fill of this verse? If Allah says, I am going to collect the Quran, it is on me. It is my duty. How you explain to me that the Quran was collected long after Muhammad's death? What is Allah's promise? Where, where we can find the promise? The hadith with the Muslims, which they have, which is all Islam is based on it. Even this one, Muhammad, he never wrote a hadith. Never. Actually, Muhammad, he said, anyone here write a hadith from me, you should erase it. Read with me carefully. So now we have no source of Islam. Let us see if we can find it. Read carefully, please. Do not take down anything from me. Do not take down anything from me. Anything. No exception. Okay. And read carefully. Do not take any, uh, down anything from me, which means don't write down anything from me, except the Quran. So what Muhammad said, it clearly, only Quran you write down. So hadith in front of us here is a stupid. Either the Muslims are stupid, or Muhammad is a stupid because if you are saying to them write only the Quran but yet Islam is in the hadith because there is many rules is not exist in the Quran remember the Muslims they abrogate the Quran by a hadith hadith for those who do not know is the statement or the teaching of Muhammad through his companion reported by them or people who witness a behavior or action or a speech so now which the Muslims they call it Sunnah, which means a practice of the Prophet. So now, if we do not write the Hadith, how we are going to preserve Islam? 
the teaching of Muhammad if it is not in the Quran okay don't take anything down from me and he who took it down anything from me except the Quran he should erase it so all the hadith in front of us should be erased and look how stupid this statement is the guy writing down that anyone write hadith should erase it he writing hadith have you ever seen stupid people like this imagine Jesus says don't write things I say and then I say down I write down Jesus Jesus said don't try think anything I say I mean this is stupid he just so told you he just said to you don't write down anything I say you idiot what's wrong with you but welcome to the stupidity religion the master is a stupid the follower of his are, are stupid the teacher is stupid the book is a stupid the God is a stupid and we end with a stupid writing it's like saying don't paint in the wall and then somebody says don't write in the wall and somebody then he write in the wall says the Christian prince says don't write in the wall but you are writing in the wall I just say don't write in the wall so now here we see this other other side of the justice of Islam you should not my friend you should not follow Christianity okay because this is a fake Christianity uh-huh okay what is the true Christianity they don't give us a book do you have original copy? Can't Allah save one copy? What is the justice? Don't the Christians today deserve to find one copy of the true Bible of Jesus? Don't the Jews deserve to find one true copy of the of the Torah of Moses? This is the fault of who? Allah, the Almighty God for the Muslims, cannot save a copy, yet He will punish us for a copy which we don't have for no reason. It's not my fault. He is the eternal, not me. I, I live in this earth 60, 70, 80 years and I die. So why I will be punished for a just in, in, in a stupid justice like this? And then he sent us a guy. His name is Muhammad. His real name is Qatham. He changed his name to be the praised one. He comes 600 years after, after Jesus. And he never said in the Quran, in the clear details, that the Bible is corrupt and where. I challenge the Muslim to tell me where the Bible is corrupt, where Muhammad, he said, this verse is corrupted. What about correcting us? Says in Matthew, it says, etc. I say to you, he never mentioned Matthew, he never mentioned Luke, he never mentioned John, he never mentioned anyone. What kind of a prophet this prophet is? If you read the Quran, how we can find the prophets about the prophets of God? You see, the Quran mentioned 25 prophets by name. Okay, I want to find the prophet. His name is uh, uh, Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great is a prophet of Allah. Yes, Muhammad. He put every famous scumbag he heard of in his book, and he made him a prophet. Anyone is famous is a prophet for Muhammad. Muhammad. He heard of a guy. His name is Al Khadr. Al Khadr is simply a story about a, 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 a coming from fiction story about a guy who drank from the fountain of youth, and because of that, he was called Al Khadr. Al Khadr means Mr. Green. Green. And why he was called the Green? Because after he drank from the fountain of youth, anywhere he sat, the grass turned green, even if it is yellow and dry. Suddenly, Al Khadr became a prophet in Islam. Alexander the Great, who is a bisexual, became a prophet in Islam. Let me see if I can find this hadith for you. Maybe. All right, let us see. I'll try to find it for you. So maybe we can laugh a little bit. Uh, here we go. Read carefully with me, please. Uh, let us see how we can search for this here. Maybe here. Okay. Let us search in English. This is Muhammad's stories. 
Read and love. Muhammad here is speaking about something is called the water of life. This water is called the water of life, as you see. And this water will, will be poured on the dead one and they will come back to life. How anyone in the world can believe in such a stupid thing? Or even you are burned, or even you are dying, or etc. We pure that we pour that water on you, you will come back to life. This is the fountain of youth where Al Khadr he drank from it and he became youth forever. The water of life. People will be like dust, people like they are burned, people they are dead, and all what we do, we we we, we sprinkle the water of life on them and they will come back to life. Let me see if I can find the other hadith about the water of life. Here we go. This is a different story. And this is actually the story of Al Khadr and Musa. If you remember the story of Musa and Khadr, it is exists in the chapter 20, uh, chapter 18. And speaking about Allah sending Musa to learn from a prophet, his name is Al Khadr, and he is a lot greater than, than Musa. Then Musa, he do not know how to find him. Allah told him to take with him a fish. And because now Musa arrived to the fountain of youth, the fish jumped from the basket, came back to life. Why? Because some of the water of the fountain of youth sprinkled on it and came back to life. Because remember, this magical water, anyone touch it or drink from it, he came back to life and he will become youth. And by the way, I drank from it and now I am 17 years old. So look at this story here. When the fish run away from you, this is where you will meet the Khadr. So how now Musa will know where the Khadr is? Guys, imagine I send somebody and I tell him, you go and you, you know, keep going until you meet the junctions of the two seas. If you go to the interpretation to see what is the junction of the two seas, the Muslims, they say, where the Mediterranean and the Gulf, the, the Persian Gulf met, but Mediterranean and Persian Gulf, they never met. This is stupid. Muhammad is copying here the story from a story of a guy, his name is Al Galgamish, who, who go in the world, you know, it's an old legion, you know, no, very well known in the, in, in, the, in the north of Iraq and the Persia and Turkey, about this guy who wanna live forever, he is a warrior, and then he go and he find a guy, his name is Al-Khadr, and he learn from him, trying to learn from him the secret of life, how he can stay youth, etc. Muhammad, he took the story, he put it in his book, and he made it about Al-Khadr and Musa. And then the fish, after came back from life, but until now did not tell us how the fish came back to life. So Musa set out along with his student, attendant, sorry, which means servant, servant uh, Yeshua bin Nun, who is Nun? For those who do not know, noon simply is a word in, in Aramaic mean fish. So this guy, his name is Yeshua ibn Noon, the son of Noon, the son of the fish. And they carried with them fish till they reached the, uh, the rock and, ro and rested there. So they arrived to a rock. Have you ever heard of a detail like this? We are traveling in the desert and now we found a rock as, as if the, this desert have only one rock. Amazing. Moose has put his head down and slept. And then the reporter continued the story. Said, uh, at the rock there was water spring called Al-Hayat. Al-Hayat, for those who don't speak Arabic, mean the life. So the water there, it's a water spring called the water of life. Why it's called the water of life? Because if you drink from it and you are dead, you come back to life, as simple as that. And this is how the fish came back to life. And none come and touch with the water, but became alive. If, 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 if. This is a true story. Now, guys, why I want to pray to Jesus, and why I want to go to church, and why I want to be a Muslim, and why I want to be a Jew, and why I want to be a Hindu. I want, all what I need is just to find the fountain of life, and I drink from it, and I will live forever. It looked like when you drink from this water, you became God. By the way, if there is anyone who wants some water of the water of life, 
I mean, what is that? This is this is religion of Islam. I'm sure many of you have never heard those stories before. Maybe most of you. This is the stupidity. So now we have a prophet. His name the Green. For he drank from the water of life, and whatever he touched, he became alive. And remember, the Mister Green, the prophet Green, he was exist in the funeral of Noah. What? Yes, and he was exist in the time of Moses. Yeah, and he was exist in the funeral of the prophet Muhammad. That's mean, Mister Al Khadr is always alive, alive since Adam, alive since. Abraham, a life since Moses, a life since uh, uh, Muhammad, and for sure he's alive right now. How he would die? The guy, this guy, he drank from the water of life. Are you kidding me? Now, where is the justice? Because my topic is about justice. How you say to us, if you do this and this and this and this, I will save you, I will go to take you to heaven. And then we find that this religion teaching that there's a fountain, if we drink from it, we became immoral. Because we became, sorry, uh, uh, like eternal people. We never die. What is justice here? What 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 is what justifying the existence of the fountain of life? What the purpose of it? Stupidity, fairy tale stories, and then Moses, after he washed his fish and uh, and uh, and uh, or like to say the fish touched this water and came back to life, this fish jumped from the basket and entered into the sea. So when Moses wake up, he asked his attendant, "Bring the early meal," and this is exist in chapter eighteen, verse number sixty-two. The narrator added, Moses did not suffer. From fatigue, except after he had passed the place he had been ordered to observe. Look, look at the magic. Allah did not even make him get tired. But when Moses passed that area, Allah in purpose make him get tired, so he sleep there, so he don't go farther because he is missing the point. So now Moses he slept in that area. For Allah, he wants the fish to slip from the basket, for the fish is going to be his guide, as we will hear in the rest of the story. His attendant, Yeshua ibn Nun, said to him, Do you remember what happened when you we, we uh, uh, betook ourselves to the rock? I did indeed forgot about the fish. Chapter 1863, the narrator added, So they came back, retracting their steps, and then they found in the sea the way of the fish looking like a tunnel. <laughs> what happened, my friend, when this fish jumped from the basket, she jumped into the sea. However, where, wherever this fish walk or swim, sorry, this, the fish leave a mark in the water and the water turned to be a rock. So now Moses and his attendant, his servant, they have a highway inside the ocean which where the fish previously went through. So now Moses entered into the sea, walking in the top of the sea, which has became a rock. So there was an, an astonishing event of, in, of uh, for his attendant, and there was a tunnel for the fish. When they reached the rock, they found man covered by garment. So now they walk inside the sea, which is became like a bridge in the water, and then they found in the middle of the sea, a guy was covered by a garment, and actually this is a green garment. Moses greeted him, and said to him, as you know, as the, you know, like in the rest, hello, blah, blah blah. And he said to him, "Is there is any such a greeting in your land?" So like, what? How we can greet you? Hmm? Moses said, "I am Moses." The man said. Moses of many Israel? Ah, oh, the Moses of the Jew? Uh -huh. Moses said, yes, you see, Moses is even famous. And added, may I follow you so I you teach me something of the knowledge? And the story continues. It's a funny, stupid story. And then in this story, you will see something very funny. And as long as we are talking about the justice, and actually this is why I mentioned this stupid story for you, because we want to talk about justice. So what does have to do with the justice? Read with me carefully.
when Moses followed this man, which his name is Al Khudr, Al Khudr he passed by a child, a Muslim child. A Muslim child. Okay. Why he killed this Muslim child? Let us see. Uh, here we go. Chapter 18, verse number 74. Okay, what happened in chapter 18, number 74? It says that Al Khadr he saw a child. And this child was just a Muslim child playing with other children. So when they proceed until they met a young man, it doesn't say man, it's, it is, this is false, this is not a man, this is a boy. So he slew him, Musa said, has those who slew an innocent person who had slain none? What is justice? Well, why, why you kill this boy? Al Khadr answered, he said to him, I told you, you will not have patience with me. Now, Moses looked like an idiot. The guy, Allah ordered him to, to learn from Al Khadr, and Moses is not listening. He keep asking, and he have an objection for the behavior. Moses, I said, I if I ever ask thee about anything after this, keep me not. So kick me away from your company. And then they proceed, and etc. And then after that, we will find this Al Khadr. He explained why he killed the boy. Why he killed him. Read with me carefully. As for the boy, his parents were people of faith, and we feared that he would grieve them by obstinate, uh, obstinate uh, rebellion, and etc. So this boy, he feared that he will not be a good believer. So what we do, we kill him. What is justice? All the Quran teach, supposedly, that nobody will pay for the sin of somebody else and nobody will pay for a crime did not commit. This boy did not commit the crime yet. How you do such a behavior? Remember, this man is doing the order of Allah. A boy is getting killed and he is a Muslim boy from a Muslim family. His family are believers. Yet he will be killed just because we feared. What do you mean we feared? What, what does that mean? And if this story is true, that's mean everything we have in life is false. Why? Because here we go. I am a Christian prince now and I am a man. Why Allah? He don't fear that when I grow up, I will be Christian prince and he killed me since I was a kid. Why he did not send me one of the Muslims to kill me? Which one is more dangerous to Islam? This guy, this this boy, or me? And are we saving what we are doing exactly by killing this youth? Like what exactly happened now? So what judgment day for? And what the punishment of the guilty for? And what does sin mean if we kill children when they are children just because we fear that they will be rebellion? This is the logic of Islam, it's stupid. You know, the Muslim, they say to you, in the Old Testament, it says that God, he ordered to kill children. You know, but the Muslims believe in the flood of Noah. They believe strongly in the flood of Noah. So why, what's the problem now? Hypocrisy. The flood of Noah killed everybody. Women, children, kids, old, young. It's a flood. Suddenly, there are people who don't accept the death of anyone unless he is guilty. Oh, here we go. What is the guilt of this child? Nothing. If you go to the interpretation of this chapter, you will find this that the, this person was slaughtered in a very ugly, disgusting way for no reason. Each time we try to speak to Muslims about their religion. They give you all kind of funny, stupid justification. Why a Muslim will get 70 versions? Because he prayed to Allah. Is that, a, is that a reason 
to abuse 80,000 human beings to be your sex slave? Do that justify? I mean, do the do the do the uh, being obedience justify the reward which is abuse? Since when abuse is a reward? When a Muslim he says to us, uh, let us say, let us see if we can find you. The story. <clears throat> All right. What is the lowest reward for the people of paradise? Read with me, Allah. This is justice and this is religion. The list of people in paradise, this is the lowest. This is the bad Muslim. This is not the good Muslim. Is the one with 80,000 servant. 80,000 servant? I pray to Allah five times a day. And because I did that, Allah will enslave for me 80,000 human being. I mean, this is justice, obviously. Can you find more justice than this? This is the most disgusting promise ever. This is slavery even in heaven and the slavery in wide number, mass number. 80,000 servants, and they will be, by the way, boys. They will be serving me. Where is the justice? Do the reward match with justice? The reward itself is the reward of disgusting this is abuse. The punishment in Islam is an abuse. It's not justice. As an example, the Quran speaks about crucifixion. Muhammad himself, he heated nails and put it in the eyes of his enemies. He cut their hands, he cut their feet, he tortured. Where is justice? If somebody, in case of murder, kill him, if somebody kill, okay, kill him. Why you want to crucify him and cut his hands? Are you a pagan Roman? In the Old Testament, it says, cursed is the one who is hanged on the tree. Who is that one is cursed? Is the criminal who hanged on the tree. But this is not the punishment of God. This is the punishment of the Roman. So those who they do usually hang in the tree is the thieves, criminals, etc. But, yeah. Allah himself adopting the teaching or the torture of the Roman that need a big explanation. Where is the justice? A person who kill, kill him. This is eye for an eye. Why you want to cut his hands and his feet? Why you want to put him in the cross? This is nothing. This is nothing to do about punishment. This is about torture. This is a pure torture. This God, he enjoyed torturing. And this God, I when I say this God, I mean Muhammad. You see, when people, they see a video of ISIS saying, ISIS is a crucifying somebody, putting nails in their eyes, cutting their feet, cutting their hands. They say, ISIS is not Islam. This is Islam, my friend. This is Islam. This is exactly what they practice in Saudi Arabia as we speak. So what do you mean ISIS is not Islam? Only donkeys, they say such a thing. Name for me one thing ISIS, they practice, is not Islamic. Just one. Just one. Even Muhammad, he said, about a group of Muslims who they are not attending, the prayer for Friday, he said, I was going to order my men to grab some wood and burn them in their houses for not attending the prayer. Uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, the cousin of Muhammad, he burned people alive, alive. And the rest we know, cutting hands, cutting feet, beheading, torturing. This is what this religion is about. Where is justice? 
heaven of Islam there's no justice in it Allah will create for me if you guys have my books uh, or especially the last book which is six and Allah you will see how disgusting the promises of this God in the heaven when this God he promised me women I never met I never saw I never know any one of them and those women are designated for my sexual pleasure where is justice what about them the Quran says to us that those women they don't have jealousy those women they don't have jealousy well thank you very much is that mean Allah he made them six stories without feeling where is justice how you how even you dare to say to me that uh, uh, I'm going to give you women uh, didn't have feeling how dare you Allah just to make the man happy in the heaven so he will not have a headache from women who give him headache for they are jealous Allah will take their jealousy out what is that he made for us women without feeling pure six toys as simple as that and you are telling me that this is God what kind of God he do such a thing what is this justification for such a promise what is the logic what is the wisdom? Nothing. It's a pure, disgusting cult. Make me happy and make them my sex slaves for eternity. How anyone can accept that? And then he promised me, boys, as we showed you, 80,000. This is for the lowest reward lowest reward do you see it and don't forget this hadith is da'if because the muslims don't agree about the number some of them they say it is not 80,000 it is 70,000 some they say it is not 70,000 it's 114,000 some they say it's not but all of them they agree that it's a huge mass number of servants and sex slaves will be waiting for you in heaven what is this and the quran confirm that in the heaven we will have little boys who they are white like pearls and here you will notice that how racist even in the employee requirement you see Allah will employee those to serve you but those employee they have requirement too they have to be white and they have to be white to the point you see through their bones no black is allowed to join the employee force or the slavery force in Islam the slaves there they have to be white why 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 Muhammad focusing on the white slaves in, in, in the heaven because here is a place of entertaining and this is supposedly the five stars hotel of Allah everything is sex food drink and he want a Muhammad to give the Muslims who have a mindset that only white are beautiful and non white are not beautiful this is why he is Promising them that they will be white Muhammad he said that the first group will enter paradise Allah will make them so white more white than the rest If we go to chapter 82 verse number uh, 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 Chapter 27 verse number 82 you will see how Allah will make all the Muslims By an animal is called a jassasa all of them pure white and all non Muslims will be black and now the heaven is not going to be enough for them satisfying enough unless everybody there including the sex slaves and the servants are very white this is why the quran described those boys as pearls as we read here all those verses in the front of us let us see this one first chapter 52 verse number 24 can any Muslim explain to me why they are described like this? 
they are so white like pearls. So those are little boys who Allah created them to satisfy your desire. And what is your desire? Is to have a beautiful boys who they are naked, wearing no clothes, and they are around you. And by the way, the Quran says they will never bleed. But the Muslim, they say, oh, bleeding here does not mean bleeding from sex. It means they will not get drunk. But those are the servant, my friend, supposedly. And servant don't drink. The drink and the joy of a drinking is only for the masters. And the Quran and the Hadith give us a clear description that those women are so white too. So the, the, the Muslim will be extremely white. The women, they will be extremely white to the point their whiteness is disgusting. So you can see through the bones, the marrow of their bones. Because Muhammad always exaggerate with his lies to satisfy the desire of those Arab Muslims who they are obsessed with the whitening or the white women. This is why we don't see any promise of African women in heaven or Indian women in heaven or Pakistani women in heaven for they have to be extremely white. You cannot be Asian and Allah will hire you. You are not welcome, sorry. Allah is a racist God. This is the God of the Arab, and Muhammad is very racist. He only, only, only like especially very white women. This is why in the Quran, he said, uh, uh, you know, in the tafsir, it says that when Muhammad, he asked the Muslims to invade the Roman, he told them, attack the children of the yellow, as they call them, the children of the yellow, which means they are blonde, so you can get the girls, the yellow girls. Don't you want to get the blondie? And then one of the Muslims, he said to Muhammad, oh, don't tempt me with the blondie women. So Muhammad, he made a verse about it in the Quran, about a guy who is supposed to be a hypocrite. We said to Muhammad, don't tempt me with women. I don't want to go to war. Hmm? Women whom man yaqul ikhdhan li wa la taftunni. Chapter 9, verse number 49. Please, I apologize. Don't invite me for such a war by tempting me. You see here, into trial. What trial? It's about temptation. It, you can go and read the interpretation. The guy, he was, Muhammad, he was promising them, saying to them, well, we should go and attack the, the Roman the, the people, the yellow people, so we can get their girls, so we can get their daughters. So one of the Muslims, he said to him, oh, hold on. You are seducing us to go for war for women? Muhammad, he got upset, and he found that he himself got busted for he's an evil man. So he said, ah, the man who said to me, don't invite me for war by temptation. Muhammad, he did not say, let us attack the Roman to spread Islam. He did not say, let us attack the Roman to, to preach to them or to reach out to them. No, let us attack them so we can get the blondie. And the man spoke about, and this is in the interpretation, not my statement. And then Muhammad, because now he got busted, obviously he's an evil man. Where is justice in this? You want to attack your neighbors just to get the blondie girls, their daughters? Is that what the religion is about? We attack the neighbors to get the blondie girls, so we rape them. So he is tempting them, saying to them, don't you know that they have a blondie girls? Don't you want to have a girl? She have a blonde hair, white skin. Come on, let us attack them. And this man, he said to him, and this, and now it became part of the Quran. Imagine, Muhammad, he have his answer ready. Allah told me, the guy who said to you, don't tempt me, he's a hypocrite. Who is the hypocrite? The hypocrite is the one who says to his followers, attack the neighbors so we can get their girls. Where Jesus said, go and attack, attack the neighbors so we can get the white women. That is disgusting. Where is justice? What is logic? What is God? This is what God is about? We attack the neighbors to force the neighbors to believe in God by raping their girls? You see, the Roman, they never invade Muhammad. Never, never. Muhammad, he prepared himself to invade the Roman and he was not successful. Muhammad died and he could not accomplish anything with the Roman. 
the success was after Muhammad's death. So here we ask ourselves again and again, where is justice? What is justification of Muhammad army to invade Egypt? Nothing, except they say to spread Islam, spread Islam by taking the money and the, the women of the people, by taking the land of somebody else. What about sending preachers the same as the Christians? The Muslim, they say to you, do you know what the white man did to the American Indian? What this what this do to do? What this have to do with our topic? Nothing. Nothing. The white man, he was enslaving black people too, but this is not according to the teaching of Jesus. Black people who they are Christians, who became a Christians, they were enslaved. But this is history of a human being, ugly, have nothing to do with Jesus. The African, in certain time, they enslaved the white man too. The whole nation of Israel was enslaved by the African Egyptian, all the nation. And this is written all over the Bible. So both they enslave each other, both. But here what we see in the front of us, a person justifying what is he called from God for an ugly reason, not for the sake of God. He want to get the blonde girls. The same as he is justifying that God will give you 80,000 virgin or a child to serve you in heaven or to have sex with them. What is the excuse? You were praying to Allah five times a day. I mean, what is the disgust? What, what a disgusting reason. What about I go to heaven and that's it and make me happy? Do I need to have 80,000 slaves for sex? There's no justice. Can't God reward me without abusing someone else? Do you really feel good if you go into a palace in heaven and you find that there is 80,000 human beings under your shoes? And they will be there for eternity. Slavery in earth is a lot better because slavery in earth, maybe one day you can get your freedom, maybe you can run, maybe you will die, and that's it. Here, it is eternity of slavery. You spend your life, if you are a woman, excuse my language, you spend your life, your panties off, having sex with a guy you never know, you never met, and each time you finish having sex, Allah will make you virgin again, and you have to say to the husband or the man who is sleeping with you, oh, you are the best. And you have to sing for him and dance for him. This is your job. This is your job. The women, they will not eat. The women, they will not drink. The, the women, they will not even change their clothes because they are wearing nothing. The man he drink, the man he enjoy. The women is just a sex toy. Where is justice? Every corner of a, 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 a of logic of justice in this religion is demolished. What is justice when a man he can have four wives? The Muslim they say to you, well, we know we need to know a man he can marry four wives because we need to know who is the father. Okay, today we solve this problem. We can know who is the father. And what a big deal. The Arab before Muhammad used the women she used to know. She used to have 10 men, up to 10 husbands at the same time. Why you care too much about the father? This is now the worry. What about it's enough to know who is the mother? We can change the rules. This is not a justification. Why the man, he can have many wives, the, the women, she cannot. A man, his name is Muhammad. He have 13 wives according to Islam. A Muslim man, he can have only four. What is the justification? He's a prophet. So if you have a higher job, you get more women? What is, what, is, what is the logic about God? You are a person who is the best example about or about religion, but yet you are a person who don't want to follow your own law. So everybody can have only four maximum, but Muhammad, he can have unlimited number of wives and six slaves. Why? Because simply, this is a religion made by the man for the man. There is no justice. Muhammad, he have the fifth of every attack to his pocket. What is justice? 
even the thief Muhammad he is not justice with his thieves any Muslim woman she can give herself to the Prophet to if or excuse my language but that cannot happen to a normal Muslim this gift only a privilege for Muhammad why where is justice what is equality in this religion why the man in heaven can have this huge number of women you see the excuse in earth that a man can have multi women for we need to know who is the father okay in the heaven there is no children's there is no giving birth can the women have 72 men to sleep with a Muslim woman can she have 72 no why why she is a believer too she prayed to Allah where is justice this is the most stupid religion ever and if you don't see how stupid it is it means seriously you have a mental issue we forbid people from drinking wine in earth but we give them a, a, a flood of wine in heaven I mean where is where is what does that mean in the heaven of Allah, a Muslim man is allowed to have sex with every member of his family. Some scholars, they say, except his mother. Some scholars, they say, even his mother. What? Yes, you can have sex with your, you know, your auntie. You can have sex with your sister. In the heaven of Allah. So, in earth, we put rules about entering the bathroom. In heaven, we have no rules to the point we became hippies and we have sex with everybody. Where is justice and where is logic? The more the more you learn about this cult, the more you find out that this is the most stupid, dumb religion. And I can go on and on about the amazing justice of Muhammad. Muhammad he allowed that Muslim men they can have uh, sex with their slaves okay can a Muslim woman have sex with her slaves no why why the man he can have sex with the slave the woman she cannot nobody knows for the justice of Islam is weird it's a religion made by the man for the man and the man he need to be happy so God of the man, he do everything in his hand to make the man happy for the God of the man is a man too. His name is Muhammad and he is a sexual perverted man. So in order to satisfy his needs and the needs of his own warriors, because this is what he care for. The women are the weak one. He do not need them. He need those who carry swords and kill. So he made and he did his best to satisfy their sexual needs sometime by giving them their sexual needs immediately by attacking the neighbors raping their women or by giving them false promises about sexual heaven full of abuse uh, sorry for those who they are posting text you know my screen is so small to look at the text i'm trying to see the text on my phone to uh, to uh, to uh, to see what you guys type in. So I want to say thank you for all those who they are saying uh, good things to me and etc. I really appreciate you. Uh, I see a question from Suze Mia saying, "Did Waraka uh, start of Quran? Uh, then Khadija carried after he died." You see, obviously, Waraka is the first person who started the Quran. If you remember the Hadith, when Muhammad. Uh, been taken by Khadija. The Hadith explained to us a little bit of the story. Says Warak of the Nufal, he was translating or summarizing the Gospel. That is the Quran, right? If you go here, you will see it says that this guy Waraka, who is the real father of Muhammad, I believe, uh, he was writing what the Muslims called the Arabic Gospel. 
Let us see. Here we go. Read with me carefully. Uh, Waraka was the son of her uh, paternal uh, uncle, i.e. her father brother, who during the pre-Islamic period became a Christian, not, not a Christian, this is true, he became a Sara, and used to write the Arabic writing of what? Of the Gospel. That is the Quran. This is the Gospel of the Nasara. This cult, it was like Jehovah's Witnesses, and Waraka was one of them. And he was writing, where is the gospel now? Where we can find this gospel? What happened to it? According to the Muslims, Waraka bin Ufal was a true Christian. Okay, that means he have the true book. According to Muhammad, Waraka bin Ufal is in heaven. That means he's a true believer, which means he has the right, the, the right teaching of Jesus. Where we can find this gospel? No Muslim can answer. And that means that Muhammad, he have his hand on the teaching of Waraka because he spent his time with him. Actually, there's tons of stories about Muhammad and Waraka. And each time, even Muhammad, when he was lost, they found him with Waraka. Why? Because Waraka is his father, his real father. If you have my book, The Deception of Allah, you will find that the sister of Waraka, she offered herself to the father of Muhammad, or Qathim, uh, to sleep with her according to the Muslims and she offered him 100 camel but why the sister of Waraka is doing that simply Waraka he sent his sister to sleep with the father of Muhammad because he already sleeping with this woman which is the mother of Muhammad so in order to divert this guy from going to sleep with the mother of Muhammad Waraka he sent his sister but his sister she could not make it because Muhammad father he told her I will come back to you to sleep with you after I finish with Fatima, I would sorry with Amina. So Muhammad, he uh, father, he went supposedly according to Muslims, he went to to his mother, slept with her, and then he came back to the sister of Waraka to sleep with her, and then she said to him, "I changed my mind. Why? Because now already it's too late. He slept with her. As simple as that. Which means obviously she was sent by her brother, and in order to keep him away from that woman. But it's too late." But if you go and read the history, you will find that this man, he is involved in everything in the life of Muhammad. And you will see that when Muhammad, when this man, he died, Muhammad tried to commit suicide. And this is telling you how much he is attached to Waraka. If you read with me here, it says it clearly. Uh, after a few days, Waraka died and the divine inspiration was also posed. So Muhammad is not receiving Quran no more. Why? Because this is he was receiving from uh, Waraka. Waraka is the one giving Quran, which is the gospel of Islam, which is the Quran. So Waraka he died, Quran died with it. There's no more Quran. And then what Muhammad he tried to do? He became so sad and he tried several times to kill himself by throwing himself from the top of the high mountain. And each time he tried to kill himself, the angel Jibreel appeared to him and he said to him. Prophet, don't do it. You are truly a prophet of Allah. Be with me. And every time he went to the up to the top of the mountain in order to throw himself down, uh, down, Gabriel would appear before him and say, Oh Muhammad, you are indeed Allah messenger in truth. Whereupon this heart, his heart, would become quiet and would calm down and would return home. Obviously, this is a behavior of somebody crazy i mean it says several each time every look what this is not something he did once and every time he went to the top of the mountain to order to throw himself how many times he died that we don't know 50 60. obviously this man he is suffering from mental problem and why he is doing that because waraka he died and what happened when waraka died inspiration stopped what is the connection why allah don't send quran to Muhammad no answer simply I know the answer because Muhammad was receiving from Waraka and obviously after after Waraka death Khadija she was able to get her hand in what the Muslims called the Arabic gospel as you see in the introduction and that is the Quran 
And here actually in this behavior of Muhammad about trying to commit suicide, it's clear evident that this man is mentally ill and he cannot be stable. Several times and each time he tried to commit suicide, the angel said to him, you are truly a messenger, which means Muhammad himself don't believe is a messenger. And he tried to commit suicide because of that specific reason. He himself, he is crazy. He want to kill himself. Everything around us in this religion give us one, one answer, one story, that this cult is a stupid cult. And you have to be a mentally ill person to believe in it. No justice, no logic. You know, because I pray to Allah, Allah will make my private part in this. That's just stupid. And my wife, she will have a one mile ass. That is even more stupid. What is that? And I will have a tent, have four doors. And my floor will be made from rubies. And my bed is going to be high and I will be wearing a bracelet. And I will wear a green shirt. I mean, how stupid the details is. This is the most annoying heaven. Imagine if this is true. Close your eyes and imagine this is true. This is very, very annoying. Imagine you have a TV program. Every day is the same for eternity. The same movie. Every Friday you attend the party in the presence of Allah. Three singers will sing. Who are they? Muhammad and David and Allah. And they will sing three of them, each one alone, the same exact song. David, he sang the psalm. Muhammad, he sang the Quran. Allah, he sang the chapter of Ar-Rahman from the Quran. And each time one of them uh, sing, Allah will ask you, have you ever heard better, better than this before? And then you will say, I never heard. How stupid, how crazy this is. But my friend, welcome to Islam. This is a religion out of logic, full of stupidity, mental illness, and all the promises fit with donkeys. Even donkeys is a smarter and they will not believe a word Muhammad he said. There's no donkey. He will travel all the way from his house all the way to walk around the Kaaba <coughs> and kiss a black stone. <coughs> all right, guys, my, my throat is getting dry. <coughs> I have to get, uh, uh, get keep going. I want to say thank you for being here. I hope today uh, we cover a good, uh, good parts of... Uh, uh, exploring this cult and I hope the Muslims they are going to take what I said without you know don't take it personal think about it think about it where is the logic where is the where, what, what this what this religion is about there's God I believe in him I go to heaven he will make my penis endless he will me a woman her boobs is round as the Quran described and they are firms I like firm boobs I don't like them to be down I mean, what, 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 this, what this is about? Like the guy, he said to us in the Old Testament, there's a song speaking about the sperm of animals. So this is like, this, this is, you see, they cannot, even, they cannot even divide between a man talking and God talking. If a God, if God, he says something, tell me what God said. If a man says something, this is what man said. Our book, my friend, is the book of books. The Bible is not a book, only word of God. When we say it is the word of God, this is generally speaking. But in the book, we will see even Satan talking. Satan said to God. Here we are showing you what your God is saying, what your God is teaching, what your God is a promise is. The promise of your God is a promise of pimp. If you show me a song made by Solomon, well, this is a king. He is making a point. He is not God. He's a man making a poetry. He speak about things. It might look sexual for you, but he's speaking about his city. Have you ever heard a woman, her chest to grow grass in it? Or you are stupid. So if I say, oh, it's a beautiful and she have a great and the grass over her, you know, with grass. Obviously, I'm speaking about something else. But because you are trying to find a defect 
you try to divert the meaning when I speak to Muslims about the Quran I find the meaning of the Quran in as Muslims they believe in it and the, not the Muslims in the internet I'm talking about the scholars not someone like Zakir Naik who try to cover the truth we know we speak about scholars of Islam who they are accepted for centuries not someone like Harun Yahya who made the tons of books about the science and the, and the Quran and now he is arrested they found that he is abusing children's for sex he is arrested right now in jail go check the news Harun Yahya go type his name in YouTube and see the girls dancing in his party who is doing da'wah to Allah he is the one who spread what is called Quran and science all the lies you have there and the Muslims copy paste They come to you to say, do you know that Lut, his daughters, they have sex with him? So what does this have to do with God? What does this have to do with God? People, they do good. People, they do bad. Show me what God said and where God, he did, did, did bad. Show me where Jesus said you can have sex with your daughter. Show me where Jesus said you can have sex without marriage. Show me where Jesus said you can steal. Go show me. The Bible report bad and good stories bad and good people we are human being we do bad actually we do bad more than good so the bible because it's the book of honesty it report stories and some of them about bad behaviors of people who did bad you ask yourself first of all do you think the jews did not see these stories for centuries if they are corrupt in the book why did they not take it off why the why the Jews did not take it off? That is a clear evidence that this book never been corrupted, and you are stupid. This is the first thing to take off, if it's a choice. But there is no way in the world you can convince any Jew to take a line out of his Torah. You Muslims are the one who do that. As an example, if we show you the verse of the muta in the Quran, you will say to me, this is not about muta. It says muta in Arabic. No, it's not about muta. Then we go and we show you the interpretation. You say, no, it's not about muta. Then we show you the hadith. You say, no, it's not about muta. Why? Because you are in denial. You don't believe how, you don't want to, to, to admit how stupid your cult. Where Jesus allowed us to do muta. In chapter 25, verse number 54, it's allowed for a Muslim to have sex with his own daughter. And this is the teaching of Allah, not the teaching or not the behavior of a single man or single daughters of somebody. Every Muslim who have a girlfriend, he can have sex with his daughter if she is daughter from adultery. If she is daughter from marriage, he cannot have sex with her. This is Islam. So why you are upset from the daughter of Lot who did nothing according to God? It's not God who said to them, go sleep with your father. Nowhere it says that. The daughters, they were afraid they will be out of his children and their father might die and there is no man around and there's nobody. So they decide and they made their own decision, that decision according to God. What does this have to do with shame to Christianity or to Judaism? Nothing. People they do, and God he judge. I do. If I do now something shameful, what does this have to do with Jesus? In order to be shameful to Jesus, you have to show me where Jesus said do so. If Jesus says to me, go and do muta, then you cannot even judge me. You, then you judge Jesus. You say, okay, well, you know what? Jesus says do muta. Here we go. But this is new Quran. And this is your teaching. Even your religion is about muta. What do you do? What do you do in religion? Sex. Everything in this cult is about sex. Sex and belly, penis and belly, is everything in Islam. There's no heart. Why a man he marry a woman? Muhammad he said for her money, for her beauty, and for her religion. Three reasons. None of them is love. <laughs> Three, you know, three reasons, none of them is love. 
why a man will sleep with all those women in heaven all reason mentioned none of them is love it's lust it's pure sexuality the lust of the belly the lust of the penis the lust of the eyes you want to see something beautiful you want to see naked women you want to see beautiful body you want to see beautiful uh, private part you want to have 70 years orgasm where is love no love what i will do in heaven am i going to live in love no i will live in sex you will be a perverted creature who have nothing to do in life except playing with your penis this is the this is the reality why people don't want to say it as it is what do you do in heaven when you go what exactly your program let us say in heaven you don't according to islam you will not sleep you will not get tired okay what do you do sex sex non-stop eating and sex a sandwich in your mouth a penis in the other hand this is the truth you are addicted a creature for sex and food and drink this is all what you do what is your love you will be loving who there which wife which women and the funny Muhammad described the whore that all of them they have the same face the same voice the same name the same here imagine we open a website for dating and everybody in the heaven of Allah look the same by the way even men they look the same every Muslim man will be there in the heaven look exactly as other his Muslim brother same face same height same tall same age all of them they will be having the face of Joseph all of them they have the age of Jesus 33 years old all of them they have the same hair the same eyes the same voice same for the women all the whore not the wives all the whore they will have same face same voice same eyes same lips everything is exactly copy i mean how silly that is imagine we open a website for dating in islamic heaven all women there their age is the same have the same face have the same name and they sing the same song the same song and they have the same profile and that exactly what will happen to the muslim men all of them their name is joseph all of them they are 33 years old all of them they have the same height the same eyes the same voice what's a silly religion and you are telling me islam make sense what makes sense about it and you know what the point of having eighty thousand women for sex if all of them they look the same if i step with one i step with all and not only that each time you step one of the one of them allah he make her version and then she said to you oh you were the oh, you were the best in bed man but this woman she never have sex with anyone else how what do you mean she says to me i am the best what does that mean exactly what what is the point this is the teaching of a perverted man he want to satisfy you make you feel proud of yourself ah oh, you are the goat you are the mule you are the one who is penis is powerful so after you finish sex with her and the angel he will come and he wrap at your shoulder says please brother next woman because she is burning you are right this is heaven this is pimp house i better go to las vegas tomorrow and the most funny thing about muslims they speak about logic they say to you it doesn't make sense show me one thing of the teaching of jesus does not make sense show me one thing jesus he did can be proved to be proven to be crazy crazy or stupid or sick love your enemy don't divorce your wife don't exchange women don't hurt the children don't hate don't kill don't steal love everyone if somebody asks you for your 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 code give him your address if somebody asks you to walk with him a step ask walk with him 1000 step if somebody slam your right cheek give him the other one tell me what jesus said is not qualified for you to be fallen and you follow Muhammad let us say for the sake of argument the Bible is corrupt show me one thing Jesus he said in this Bible is sick for sure you have no answer
I want to say thank you guys for being here. We spoke for long today. I will try if I can do tomorrow broadcast. I will. If not, maybe Monday. Until we see you again, I say may the Lord bless you all. And don't forget, if you like to help us in what we do, you can make a donation in the link down. And those who like to have my books, you can go to Amazon.com and you can search for Christian Prince and you will find the list of my books. And I hope that those who they are listening, they are learning. And we are not here to insult anyone, but to insult the devil. The devil, he is targeting the foolish ones of us. And we are not here to call you a foolish as much we are here to help you not to be a foolish. Islam cannot be a religion. Islam is a sexual cult concentrating on your sexual organs to drive you to do something wrong, to drive you to do jihad and kill your fellow neighbor. God don't want killers. God don't like people who hate each other. God is not evil. God don't like to spread hate. God will not allow such a thing to happen, but he gave us a freedom of a choice. So choose what is right for you. If you wish to be killed, then go and kill, because this is what will happen. Jesus said, those who take by the sword, by the sword will be taken. That is justice. Don't kill people so people will not come to you and kill you to your door. Don't be hateful because hate will come back to you. People who live with hate, they die with it. They are the first victim. Your hate will kill you. And Jesus is the only one who freed us from our hate. I hate no Muslims. With all the threat I receive, with all the cursing, with all the names calling, I hate no Muslim. For a very simple reason. I'm not stupid. I know that those people are victims of the stupidity of this cult. They might be a good people, but they are victims. They thought, and as Jesus said, time will come and people will kill you, thinking they are doing a favor to God. A Muslim want to kill me right now because he think he is doing a favor to Allah. But the fact, this is the devil. If your Allah is God, well, if you want, he can kill me right now as I'm speaking right now. Can't he? For sure he can if he's God. So why he need you? Why he want to use you? Why he want to destroy your life and your family? You go to jail, I go to the grave. For the benefit of who? What kind of God he can protect himself? What kind of God he need people to defend him? I do not need to defend Jesus. If Jesus is God, he would do what he need to do. If he is the God Almighty, he is the in control of Judgment Day, who am I to defend the Almighty God? That is stupid. God do not need any of us. Give to God what is to God. And be you as a human. Don't be an animal. Animals, even animals don't kill unless they are hungry. You might walk next to a wolf, but he will not attack you. Why? Because he's full. His stomach is full. He look at you and he keep going. Can't you be a wolf who kill only if he is hungry? Maybe you cannot because you are following Muhammad who wanted you to be a walking killer, a tool of killing, a person who is proud and dancing from happiness for evil behavior of killing a human being, the same as we saw Muslims dancing in 9-11. Why you want to dance for the death of 3,000 people burned alive? What make you happy about that? Evil. Evil. I will not be happy to see Muslims dying anywhere. When tsunami happened, the Muslims were crying from happiness. Happiness, not sadness, because they thought those who they die, they are the kuffar. But the fact later they found that they were Indonesian Muslim like them. Thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you soon again, Christ is Lord, Islam is false. Amen to that. Thank you very much. God bless.